Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at Elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elkara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, this is KY4BDP Brian. What are we going to be doing today? Well, we are going to showcase some skill sets that every amateur radio club needs to have, and that is the ability to replace hardware. In our case here at Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association we're going to replace our 70 centimeter repeater. Uh, the Yesu DR2X is what we're going to utilize uh, for the 70 centimeter side of our club and this uh, this repeater can do analog and digital C4FM or as Yesu likes to call it Fusion. And, uh, in fact, we're going to be utilizing this repeater in AMS mode, or automatic mode select, where somebody can come in on analog, just fine. Somebody can come in on digital, just fine. So it'll be able to go back and forth depending on who initiates the initial connection. So with this helicopter view of the repeater, you can kind of get a feel for how big it is. It's about a 2U size if you're in the IT field. Uh, about a 2U size uh, device. And uh, we're going to head out to the shack and we're going to install this guy into the rack. So uh, and we're also going to install the antenna as well that this repeater is going to use. The old antenna that we've been using has been up there 15, 20 years. So it's just wobbling in the breeze. So let's get to it. Let's head up to the repeater site and let's replace that repeater and that antenna. Here we're on the back of the uh, rack, and uh, AC4DM, our Elmer, who spearheads a lot of these projects, is beginning to disconnect a lot of the old cables from the old repeater, from the duplexer, from power, and so forth. We have AC and DC going to the old repeater. We'll have AC and DC power going to the new one. We utilize a duplexer for the transmit receive frequencies to keep them isolated. We have duplexers on all of our repeaters. We have four up in that jack, uh, or three, I should say, two meters, 70 centimeters, and six meters. Here's a preamp that we used to have to use with the old repeater, the old Motorola MyCore, which we'll see showcased in just a moment. That's superfluous. We do not need that anymore, so we just yanked that off. And here's the Motorola MyCore. Now, my Elmer told me a story. He's he's cobbled together a lot of these repeaters over the years because they're cheap. They were coming off of uh, usage by a state agency someplace, and you could get these off of auctions and eBay sometimes. And so that's what we've been using, and it's worked out great. They were uh, built like a tank, and... Uh, uh, just work, you know, uh, old school technology, but man, did it work really well. And here's one of our other members just holding on to it as we pull it out of the front of the rack. You can see all the cabling and so forth. It doesn't even have all the panels on it. But uh, our Elmer, AC4DM, had made some modifications so that we could use this piece of equipment for a 70 centimeter 443.600 frequency repeater for years. I think we've been using it over 15, 20 years. It was older when we got it, so there's a very good chance this particular piece of gear is over 30 years old, and it still worked. Why are we replacing it? Because it had some sore spots, uh, getting a little bit old, and it also required additional equipment to do certain things, whereas the modern ones don't. Here's Don on the back, and again, he's just cleaning up some things and making sure that we have everything uh, removed off the old repeater. Don is an amazing gentleman, and Chris and I, KY4CKP, are learning just heaps and heaps of knowledge from this man right here. Here's the front of the new repeater, the System Fusion DR2X uh, fusion repeater and uh, not powered on at this point we just literally put it in the rack and we're getting ready to start connecting things on the back and now we're on the back side and uh, AC4DM is connecting some of the new cables we went ahead and replaced all the cables on the back as well the patch cables between the duplexer and the repeater 
and he's tightening those down as you can see we've got the MFJ 259 sitting there on top just to check uh, the SWR which we actually did a little bit later uh, in this video but you can see the duplexer there and uh, uh, that one's really short if you see the two meter it's about five feet tall if, or four feet tall if you see the six meter it's even taller still and as you get up into those bands if you ever use these duplexers these cavities vacuum cavities uh, can get quite tall the longer the frequency so uh, but those are really small they actually fit in a panel or on a panel inside the rack and you just uh, connect patch cables uh, from it to the repeater so that's what he's finalizing here to get those ready and they're already tuned we didn't have to change anything there now we're on the back of the radio. We've got power connecting. You can see the AC power bottom right. We've got the DC power cable connected on the repeater. Now it's not actually connected on the distribution panel on the back. We're going to go down below. You can also see the receive antenna. There's a transmit on the left corner. But the DC is not connected yet. We're using a rig expert uh, distribution panel and we're utilizing a 15 amp fuse. Now it has inline fuses as well on the Anderson power pole uh, cable that you see there. So we were good to go as far as not going to fry our brand new repeater. In any event, that's the backside of a few fans and uh, we're basically ready to uh, go install that antenna. The repeater's now in the rack and it powers up and here in the next segment we'll show you the front side of the repeater with it powered on. So AC4DM is just checking the setup at this point. He had programmed this repeater at the house, so this was ready to go. We didn't really have to change anything once we put it in the rack. Uh, there's documentation on how to do the setup. We're utilizing the voice ID. It can also do Morse code or CW as an ID. It cannot do both. A lot of comp uh, uh, amateur radio clubs use a CAT controller to do that. This has it built in, so we could remove the CAT controller. Uh, this will also accept DTMF codes. We don't need the CAT controller for that either. So uh, this repeater has just about everything built in that you could ever want. Now we're going to move outdoors. And folks, this is where being in a club really matters because you need several people out here running the, the guy lines and helping uh, move equipment up and down that tower. And you need a tower monkey. And I'm, uh, I'm uh, proud to admit I'm that monkey, uh, one of them. Uh, we have uh, an additional member in the club who had been going up on that tower before me, and I'm sure he's been up on that tower many times, and AC4 DM. Um, uh, has been up on this tower many times and you can see the antennas as we start panning further and further up we've got a number of antennas both for remote receive sites as well as two meters 70 centimeters six meters and then there's some antennas up there that are unnecessary in our next summer probably uh, uh, work day we'll start pulling some of those old antennas off and some of the old cabling as well but eventually we're gonna pan up to the top and there's the tower monkey he's about 90 feet off the ground and he's gonna be replaced placing that antenna there at uh, uh, second from the top. Here we're looking at uh, uh, myself one more time uh, from a different angle. Now if you look closely at that antenna there that I'm uh, uh, I guess at that level you can see it wobbling. That's how poor it had gotten. The screw had come out or maybe it was never there but I'm pretty sure it had been originally and the antenna was just wobbling up there. It, that antenna had been up there 15, 20 years. It was time to come down, and even one of the radials was bent. I don't know if that was from a hawk or an eagle, but uh, a brand-new Comet GP3 took its place. Now, I took this video. I was being really careful. I'm harnessed in, so there's no way for me to fall off while I'm doing this. But uh, I thought, well, I'll take one video while I'm way up here on this tower. This is about 90 feet up on the tower, but this knob that the tower is on gets us up way, way up there. And as I uh, move the camera up, you'll be able to see about the uh, height of this knob and the uh, tower itself. There's that bent radial that you can see. There's the old antenna. And we're basically replacing it with just a newer version of it, a Comet GP3, which is also what I use here at the house. Uh, but if I pan here to the left and to the right, you can just see off into the distance. This is late November, um, and uh, you can see the leaves have already fallen off most of the trees. Uh, beautiful. But this is one of the reasons why our club has such a great signal. And you can hit this repeater from almost 100 miles away. I'm not saying it's clear at 100 miles, but it's it's hittable. I can hear the tone from uh, the 2 meter and the 70 centimeters from a long, long distance, which is really great because we can serve a multi-county area in an emergency for Aries and races, and uh, some of you will know what I'm talking about there. And there's the KET tower. That's our public television station and radio station tower that we share this knob with. And uh, that's me up there, and uh, that's the old antenna, and I've got to replace that with the new one. 
So I had a lot of fun up on that antenna. It was a beautiful day, sunny and uh, not too hot, not too cold. Had a lot of fun up there. Now, KY4 uh, CKP uh, is uh, filming this from the bottom. Uh, I hate to even admit this, but I dropped my phone from up there. So after filming that, that last little segment, I dropped my phone. So he's filming this from the bottom. You can see I'm working on a, a lower section of the antenna, uh, making sure that the cable is routed correctly and the cable management uh, uh, pieces that we have attached to the antenna. All right, now for the last segment of this repeater antenna, uh, installation that we have been showing you up to this point. Uh, we're going to test with a radio to see if we can really tell the difference between the analog and the digital. The analog's always been very good because we've had a good repeater, although you got a chance to see how old it was. With the new Fusion, should sound hopefully the same, but then we'll switch over to digital and see how that sounds. So let's give it a go. This is KY4 BDP on the 70 centimeter repeater testing analog connectivity at this time. There's a new caller ID. And that's the one built in to the repeater. KY4BDP, AC4DM, everything's sounding good so far. Hey, Dom. Well, thanks for getting back with me. Yeah, we're just uh, cutting the last segment of the video, and uh, you sound great even on analog. There's not any static, of course, with the uh, your locality uh, near the uh, repeater side itself as well as myself. So I think the analog sounds great. And we just saw the call uh, ID go out, uh, the repeater doing that by voice. And uh, so we got to hear what that sounds like on the Fusion repeater as well. I'm just about to switch over to digital. Let me know if that uh, will work for you. Very fine. That will work for me. I'll be standing by waiting on you to switch over at AC 4 m so on the FTM 400, all we have to do is hit the DX here, X for the X wires on this, but we're just going to go to digital on that channel A. Now on this radio, you can only do digital on the channel A, uh, or VFOA, I should say, sorry. Uh, so let's press the button. Now we're digital with the line across the top. It's technically in AMS mode, so if, I, if it receives it on analog, it'll stay analog. But if I send it out digital, it'll stay on digital or receive it back on digital. So let's uh, call out again to AC4DM and let's see what it sounds like with digital. KY4 BDP testing 70 centimeters, 443600 now with digital. I can't get over how clear that is, and your level even came up a little bit that time, so I can tell the difference. I don't know if the audience is going to be able to tell the difference through my mic, but uh, it definitely sounds clearer, and again, your level definitely came up. I had to turn you down just a little bit. That is correct. You've done the same on this end, and uh, you cleared up with uh, uh, no hiss or nothing. Well, that is awesome. Well, I appreciate you hanging, uh, standing by for these tests, uh, Don, and we're going to go ahead and cut this segment, but uh, appreciate you coming back, and this will make for good YouTube video, hopefully. So this is KY4BDP for AC4DM. All right, KY4BDP, good to hear you in there. AC4DM will be clear. KY4BDP clear. So we'll turn that down. So the repeater's now installed. It will work on analog or digital. We have it running in AMS, so it'll receive on digital or analog and reply back on the same. We've got the antenna uh, installed now. Now that was a Comet GP3, same one I use here at the house for the two meter uh, band when I check in with the nets typically. Uh, and uh, so same antenna. So everything's already clear, but Hopefully you could tell just a little bit of a difference with the digital. Now, for folks who only have analog radios, when we actually are talking on digital on the uh, 70 centimeter repeater, they're only going to hear a buzzing kind of mechanical noise. They won't be able to hear our conversation. So in a really low-tech way, in a way, um, it's somewhat of a uh, security piece as well, because if they don't have uh, the digital radios, they won't actually be able to follow our conversation. Now, of course, anybody that has a digital 
C4 FM fusion based radio, they're, a, they're going to be able to hear our conversation. Um, so, uh, but D-Star, not so much. Uh, DMR, not so much. Some of these other digital options that are out there, if they're just running those straight options, not a hotspot that can do them all, they wouldn't be able to listen to our conversation either. But really cool that we've got that. In fact, on 70 centimeters, I'm going to be almost predominantly digital. Uh, and on two meters, predominantly analog, because most of our members have analog radios. But uh, we're trying to drum up the support for the Fusion C4FM digital on these new repeaters. And now we have two repeaters, same model. One for two meters, one for 70 centimeters, and two new antennas, GP3s both for both those frequencies as well back at the repeater site and up on those uh, up on that tower as you saw a little bit earlier. So let's close out the video. This is KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I hope you enjoyed this. The repeater side of this, we don't get to see all that often. And for many of us, we're not the ones setting that up. We're not the ones programming the repeaters. We're not the ones going up on the tower to replace those antennas. But now you can see behind the scenes, how much work there can be, and I don't want to say how much, like a bunch, but some work behind the scenes so that when we just pick up an HT, call out on an FTM 400 or some other model, it works. Hope you enjoyed the video. 73s.